Hi, Amy Letke here to talk to you about the three mistakes that secretly sabotage your recruiting process. You know, hiring the right people just takes a tremendous amount of effort and energy. And when we don't do it right, we really feel the pain in our organization. So these three steps are things that you need to be acutely aware of as you are bringing in new talent into your organization. And it doesn't matter whether they're hourly people or whether they're salary people or even executives. These three things are going to be three areas where you can significantly improve your recruiting game and make a difference overall in your organization. Let's take a look at them. Number one, hiring too quickly. Yep, I said it, hiring too quickly. Have you ever had that situation where you take a look at a resume and you say, oh my gosh, this person is perfect, and you fall in love with that resume? Or maybe they come in and they meet with someone in your organization and that person says, oh wow, I just met this person. They're amazing. So all of a sudden, you start falling in love with things that don't necessarily pan out. What you need to do is be a little bit more of a skeptic to the process. Make sure you're documenting what that process is and don't let this I'm falling in love with my candidate creep capture you because that will be a mistake that will be costly in bringing someone in too quickly in your organization. So here's what I recommend you do. You need to document your step-by-step -step recruiting process. One of the things I like to do with my clients is I like to have a four interview segment. You've got your introduction, you've got some on-site time, you've got some testing and assessments that you might use, and you want to make sure that you're spending time to make sure that person's going to fit within your organization and core values. What are you doing to make that happen? It doesn't necessarily have to be four visits, but you want to make sure that you've got the time to meet, know that person, have them get to know you and decide if you want to work together day in and day out over an extended period of time. When you hire too quickly, you don't get the chance to do the dance. You don't find out what are the good things about this person and what are maybe the not so good. You need to take your time so that you make a good decision, evaluate each candidate, and then come to a very informed decision. All right, let me tell you a little bit about number two. What is the second most costly mistake you might have in your business for recruiting? Well, that would be that you need to have the ability for that person, but if you don't hire for fit, you're gonna be in serious trouble. When I talk to employers, they tell me 90% of on-the-job performance has to do with whether somebody fits in their organization or they don't. Now, I think statistics would probably back that up pretty close in terms of percentages. What do you think about that? I think you can teach anyone some skills that you need. Some skills might be more complex than others, but if you hire someone who's not a good fit, then they're out the door. They're not going to be working and it's going to be going through the costly time and effort and, oh my gosh, that emotional baggage of having to undo a decision that maybe you wouldn't have had to do if you looked for fit to begin with. So what I like to recommend to people who I work with is make sure you're using good skills tests. Verify and validate that that person can do what they say they can do. Second of all, you want to know do they have the ability and interest to do the job and those interpersonal skills so you know are they going to be able to fit with the team in your organization. I like to introduce assessments that help measure that so that as a leader you can validate the decision that you're making non-emotionally. We all are people, we all are human, and we're all very emotional beings from time to time, aren't we? So use some good tools to help validate the feelings and emotions that you have with very specific non-emotional criteria so that you can make a better decision. Look at fit. Coupled with a more extensive interview process, you're going to get significantly better results. Next. The third item that I see that is a huge mistake that secretly sabotages your business is not following through. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you've got a great candidate, you've gone through the process, you've assessed their talent and skills, and you're ready to bring them on board into your organization. Well, many business owners that I run into and leaders throughout organizations tell me that, oh my gosh, by the time I finish the recruiting process, I am so exhausted. <laughs> Whew, let's just get them in here and get them to work. Well, that's probably the worst thing you can do because when we think about onboarding and the success in how we get candidates from that interview process into our organization and operating successfully, it's all about that first day and the experience with the company in your orientation process. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to examine how that onboarding system works. If somebody's showing up at your office and they're an office employee and they don't have a desk, they don't have a computer, they don't have business cards, nobody tells them where the restrooms are or introduces them to anybody, that's a clear sign that that person is not going to engage in your organization and they might not get that warm fuzzy feeling about the decision they made to join, right? We want to avoid that. So for the office person, get your checklist together, whether it's a professional, a clerical person, a executive, you want to make sure that you take care of that person and that you've got a process for orientation. Not everything should be done the first day. I can dive into more of that in another session, but make sure that you get that first day experience. Conversely, if you're hiring hourly workers, equally as important, there's things that you can do to Engage that person right away. Give them a tour of your facility. Introduce them to everybody. Treat them like you really do care about them. You've invested a tremendous amount of time in the recruiting process with each of your people. Make sure that they know that they're important to the success of your organization. Schedule lunch. Make sure that they have lunch and start to develop relationships. We know as human resource professionals that those people who engage with their co-workers are going to have a much greater experience with longevity in their employment than those who don't. So take a look at what you're doing. Create extensive checklists so that you've got a way to measure and hold people accountable for that orientation process. When you do that, you're going to see significant success. I'm Amy Lecky. I want to help you make sure that you don't Take, a, take into account these three mistakes that are going to secretly sabotage your business. Let me know if I can help you improve your recruiting process and improve your organization overall.